We're resuming our poly class. Uh, today we're looking at poly primer chapters 8 and 9. So this introduces the final grammatical case, the final declension. So previously we covered uh, the first seven. Um, can anybody run through the other seven declensions? Nominative, accusative, uh, accusative, instrumental, ablative, dative, genitive, locative. Okay, did you just read off your notes? Yes. <laughs> okay, now without looking at your notes, can someone tell me what nominative is? The subject. Good. And accusative? Object. Object, good. Instrumental? Indirect object. I have no idea what that means. The uh, thing that's being through? Used. Thing that's being used, okay. Um, ablative. Anyone? Okay, you can. From. I from. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's the, it's the to origin. Oh, from. It's the oh. origin. It's from. It's what yeah. it's based on. Good. Uh, dative. Four. Two? Four. Good. That's four. Four or two. Four or two. It's like this is four. Buddha or this is two Buddha. You'd use the dative in either either case. What's genitive? Of or two. Yeah, yeah. Of is possession. Mm -hmm. uh, the owner. And what's locative? In, at, or location. location. On. Yeah. 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 And so vocative is when you're speaking directly to someone. So you'll only see vocative used in uh, quotations of actual speech. So, for example, if you were speaking to someone named Buddha, then you would just say Buddha. Or if you were speaking to many Buddhas, you would say Buddha. Huh? So, for example, if I'm speaking to Sunny, like, hello Sunny, how are you Sunny? Then that's the vocative, because I'm speaking directly to Sunny. Um, so the vocative case is when you're speaking directly to someone. Isn't that also the same as, like, when it's not conjugated? This is the stem form, and the vocative form is usually the stem form. So, if we're there speaking to you, we should say Sudasa instead of Sudaso? Correct, Sudasa. Um, realistically, nobody does that, so you can just call me Sudaso. Yeah, Sudasa would be vocative. And if there are many people named Sudhaso, and you wanted to speak to all of them, what would you say? Sudhasa. Correct. Okay. <laughs> so you, you will see this fairly often in the suttas, because the suttas are mostly records of conversations or speeches. So the vocative cases are used quite frequently. Um, the most common vocative cases that you see are the ones for speaking to monks, to bhikkhus. Um, but since those are irregular, we'll handle them later. So, vocative. Is anybody unclear what vocative is? Is there a formality to it? It says in the um, text, O oh man, O oh uncle, O oh farmer. Uh, they just say that in order to indicate that you're talking to someone. Okay. Um, so the case they give, Nara, O oh man, that's just like, if I'm like, hey man, go get me some tea, then I would say, uh, Nara, uh, go get me some tea. Okay. Not formal. No. Um, there, in Pali, formal statements are done in the third person. Um, so, in the third person I would say, like, it would be good if the man went to get me tea. That would be formal. Informal is just saying, man, get me some tea. <laughs> so yeah. this is the less formal then? Yeah, vocative is less formal. Any other questions on vocative? Um, so sudaso is at the third person or the one Sudaso one? is nominative. So the Thai naming system uses nominative names. Um, the Sri Lankan and Burmese both use the stem form, uh, which is also the vocative form. So if I had been ordained in a Sri Lankan tradition, I would be Sudasa. What does Sudasa mean? What's that? What does Sudasa mean? It means pure aspiration. <laughs> okay. Any
Any other questions on vocative? Okay, so now we have the complete declension for masculine nouns that end in A. Um, they're all declined the same way, uh, with some minor exceptions, but for the most part, all the same way. Next, we're looking at neuter nouns. So poly nouns are all of uh, one of three genders, uh, masculine, feminine, or neuter. Uh, masculine nouns we covered first because they're the most common. Um, and neuter nouns are declined very similarly to masculine nouns. So I omitted all the things that are the same and only included the ones that are different, um, as it is done in the, in the text as well. Um, so the distinct, distinct uh, thing to notice with the neuter is the plural forms, so that the ending ani is very distinctive neuter. So neuter nominative, accusative, or vocative all have this ending ani. So like buddhani, uh, if Buddha was neuter, which it's not. Um, so, so is like, this neuter noun just neuter nouns ends in a, or is just all? This neuter is neuter nouns that end in a. So we're still handling nouns that end in a because they're the most common. Um, there are many other endings, but these are the most common. So the main thing then to notice is that the nominative neuter form uh, is the same as the accusative neuter form. Um, so for example, dana, uh, which means um, giving or, or a gift. Uh, the nominative is dana, the accusative is dana. So you'll see it both ways. Uh, you'll see it in both cases. Um, otherwise it's declined basically the same as masculine nouns in A, so the same we've been looking at so far. Any questions on that? These you just have to memorize, right? What? Like there's the, like, uh, the neuter and what they... Um, the, you don't, practically speaking, you don't need to memorize because you can just tell by the declension. Oh, right, you know, we're not writing it. Yeah. Um, if you were writing, then you would have to know what what words are masculine, neuter, and feminine. But since we're reading, you don't need to know. Um, and in fact, by the time we've accumulated enough grammar, I'll give all of you a chart that I made, which is just sorted by the ending of a word. So you would just look at a word, and you see that it ends in ani. So then you would just look that up on the chart, and it'll tell you, like, if a word ends in ni, it's either locative singular, or nominative, vocative, or accusative plural. So it's much easier. Yeah, you don't really have to memorize much at all in order to be able to read Polly. Writing Polly would be a different story, but that's not what we're going to do, so you don't need to worry about that. Aww. Well, when you learn Polly, then you can teach people how to write Polly. <laughs> um, I will probably not. The truth is, though, is that just as you become immersed in the Pali language, and as you read a bunch of things in Pali, then you'll just naturally start to learn how to write in Pali. So you don't really need to be trained how, you'll just pick it up with time. But the focus of this class is on learning how to read Pali. So any other questions on neuter? Um, and don't read too much into the genders of words. Um, sometimes the genders of words is quite obvious. So, for example, the word for woman is a feminine noun. The word for man is a masculine noun. Um, but often there's no particular rhyme or reason for why something is uh, a masculine, feminine, or neuter noun. So don't get too hung up on that. Um, any other questions on that? Okay, so now we'll look at the uh, the gerund or absolutive verb tense. So previously we've only looked at a, uh, a single verb tense, which is the third person present tense, um, singular and plural. So third person present tense. Now we're going to look at a uh, uh, the absolutive form, which uses the suffixes toi, it toi, or ya. So toi is probably the most common. Uh, so, uh, for example, datva means having given or after giving. 
So this is an extremely common formation that we see in Pali. Is a sentence will start with a phrase in the absolutive, like after going to the monastery, uh, the woman mm, photographed the monks. I mean, there's no word for photograph in Pali, but you, you get what I'm saying. Or uh, having eaten his food, the monk took a nap. So uh, it's extremely common uh, as an opening statement to a sentence, establishing the immediate preceding action. Uh, so that's what the gerund sort of does. Is it establishes the previous action, what was done previously to what's happening in the sentence. So, and uh, most of the forms that we see are very simple. It's just the root of the verb with these, one of these suffixes added. So again, you can see several examples in the text. So this is a verb? Yeah, yeah. The, the gerund is a, a verb form. A particular declension of verbs. Um, so some examples in the text, for example, are from the verb pachati, which means cooks. We have pachitva. Pachitva means having cooked or after cooking. Um, from uh, kadati, we get kaditva, uh, having eaten. Uh, from hanati, we get just hantva. Uh, so with no connecting uh, vowel. Uh, I brought out these two specific examples in order to address them more precisely. So what uh, one of the features of the Pali language is that there are some consonant combinations that are allowed and some that are not allowed. So generally speaking, uh, dissimilar consonants uh, will be changed to be similar. Uh, so this is the process of assimilation. So in this case we have the we have the root uh, gum which means to go and we add the suffix ya and then we have agam ya which in Pali is just not done. You don't have my in Pali. So the Y turns into an M. So we have Agam, which is how things are done in Pali. So the general rule of thumb is that these consonant transformations are whatever makes the word easier to pronounce without losing meaning, right? without uh, distorting the meaning of the word significantly. So Agamya, Agamma. Agamma is faster and easier to say. So that's the usual switch in Pali. In Sanskrit, there's usually no change. Um, so that's one of the biggest differences between Pali and Sanskrit. Sanskrit keeps the awkward consonant combinations. Pali morphs awkward consonant combinations into easy consonant combinations. And we'll talk a lot more about consonant assimilation later, because it follows very predictable rules um, that are very easy to recognize. I'm actually a bit surprised that this book introduces the concept so early on. Um, as it's a relatively advanced concept. Uh, but just so you have some sense of it. Another thing that we occasionally see is uh, when there are, are two awkward consonants, they're sometimes transposed. So the classic example of this is HY. Um, HY is always swapped. Uh, so uh, from the root O, R, R meaning to climb, Plus ya, we get o ru yha. So the y and the h have been transposed. So again, the suffix that's being added here is ya. Um, so we can see the suffix ya. Uh, it just switches place with the preceding consonant. Is anyone following me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is anyone confused? Mm -hmm. Okay. Are people following us on Facebook? Any questions from Facebook? Not yet. Okay. And as I mentioned earlier, the basic use of it is to mean uh, having done or after doing. Um, so agamma means after coming uh, or having come. Uh, Oruya means uh, having climbed down uh, or having climbed down. Okay. Okay. Well, let's look at some sentences. Uh, this will help to clarify what we're talking about here. 
And starting at the top, Samano Vaha Rasming Asane Nasi Dati. First word, Samano. Does anyone know this word? Nominative. It's a nominative, singular, good. And what's the word mean? Anonymous, no. Close. 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 Monk, yeah, monk or contemplative. Uh, you're very close in saying novice. So the word for novice is samanera, mm -hmm. which literally means uh, young samana or small samana, <laughs> uh, little monk. <laughs> so, so samano is the nominative for contemplative. So the contemplative, the harasming. Lo locative. Good, locative. What? Singular. Singular, good, locative, singular. Vihara, Draker knows this one. Goes to the temple. Yeah, temple or monastery. So Vihara Sming, what does that mean? Yeah. What's that? Lives in? Uh, let's in just the, take, in, uh, in the we don't have a verb yet. We're just looking at this one word. Vihara Sming. Who was saying it? In the monastery? In the monastery. Yeah, in the monastery, at the monastery, on the monastery, possibly. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Asane. This is a new word. Asane. Uh, nobody knows it. Try. <laughs> Try. You can use your books. Um, I will make you use your books. Uh, neuter plural. Uh, what do you think it is? Oh, wait, no, I'm totally not oh. looking at it correctly. Uh, seat. Okay, seat, Something. good. Locative singular? It might be locative singular. What else could it be? If it's a neuter noun, what might it be? Not nominative. So asane. Accusative. It could be accusative plural. Probably not, but it could be. Wait, but I saw that it's A and I. Sorry? Is it, is it not E in the end? Asane. It's an E. So but, but you said it could be locative singular, which mm -hmm. is true. It could be that. And he said it could be neuter accusative plural. So it could be that as well. I think I just had my note wrong, where I put the neuter one as A and I instead of A and E. Um, oh, I actually forgot to mention that is it can be ani or it can be E for the accusative. Oh. So it can also be E. Oh, okay. So just making that clear. Thank you for pointing that out. So instead, not a n e, but just e. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And nasidati. What is this verb? It's a verb. Okay. I already gave away part of the story. It's a verb. What else do we know about it? Singular. Singular. Good. Means it. Good? So, putting this all together, what do we have? Contemplative sits on the seat in the monastery. Excellent. Precisely Yay. so. Yay. Um, any questions on that? No. Okay. And this next one. Upasaka Udikena Pupani Asin Chanti. Let's start with the top. Upasaka. What's that? Plural. Plural. Nominative. Nominative. Good. What's an upasaka? Lake Good. And udikena. What's that? Instrumental singular. Correct. And what's udika? This would all go much faster if you had done your homework already. Is it, is it fried rice? No. Water? Yes, water. 
Um, so unikena means, what's this mean? Steak. He said it means water. And what is the ana suffix? We just covered it. water. By means of water. Or perhaps with water. Okay. And what's popani? Flower. And what's the declension? <clears throat> It's uh, the new one. Uh-huh. Neuter. Neuter what? What's the declension? Uh, nominative, accusative, anything? It's, it's, it could be nominative or accusative. That's correct. Wait, but what about vocative? Voc um, it could possibly be vocative, though that would be very strange. But we'll keep that possibility <laughs> in mind. And asin shanti. What is asin chanti? First off, what's the declension? Um, verb singular? Not singular. Oh, plural. Great. <laughs> <laughs> and what's, what's it mean? What's asin chanti? Brains? No. Probably something like pores. Yes. Uh, uh, pores or sprinkles. So, uh, uh, let's go with sprinkles. So what does this sentence mean, putting it all together? Upasaka, come on, say it out loud. Many devotees um, sprinkle water, water on the flowers. No, 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 literal. So the um, late devotees sprinkle, sprinkle with was water. Sprinkle on the flower. flowers. Sprinkle, sprinkle flowers. flowers was water. There you go. The lay devotees sprinkle flowers, flowers with water, using water. Why does it have to be in mm -hmm. that specific word order? Because for now we're learning, so when we're learning we need to do things literally. Okay. Um, because when we say the lay devotees sprinkle water on the flowers, then oh. water is accusative and flower mm -hmm. is locative. But that's not what we see here. Okay. What we see is uh, plural accusative and singular instrumental. So oh, for now, uh, so if you were writing a translation, you could say sprinkles water on the flowers if you wanted to. But for the sake of learning, we need to be literal so that we pick up everything. So doesn't it mean light of a, I mean literally light of is with water, flowers, sprinkle? Yeah. That's what it means. Yeah. Correct. Okay. But well, that's confusing. I mean, but we have to... Well, it's just, it. it's just the word order that's used in, in Pali. So you just rearrange the words to have it the way we do things in English. Okay. Could it have another meaning? Oh, uh, well, the lay disciples could possibly be talking to the flowers, as was mentioned. Flowers could be vocative. Right. So if this was a statement, Then one might be saying, hey flowers, the lay disciples are sprinkling with water. <laughs> okay. So that is technically possible, uh, but if we looked at the context of the sentence, the other words in the paragraph, then it would almost certainly not be that way. Okay, uh, next we have tapaso tatagatasa savakam disva vanditva panhang pochati. Fun times. So, tapaso. We know this word Singular already. Nominative. Singular nominative, good. And what's it mean? What's a tapasa? It's not something you eat. Tapas, it's not tapas, <laughs> it's tapasa. <laughs> I keep thinking what tapas. Okay, you're not even trying. Come on. I don't have a book. Oh. Oh, it's a hermit. Yeah, or an ascetic. Ascetic. I translate this as ascetic. So an ascetic, tathagatasa. For the tathagata. No. Possibly. Or what else could it mean? It could be for the tathagata, or it could be... Of. Of the tathagata, yes. Savakam. Savaka, what's a savaka? That's a uh, 
student. <laughs> student. Yeah, student. Correct. Accusative singular? Uh, yes. Accusative singular. Excellent. And this va. This is a new word. What's the form? This va. What's the declension? It's either nominative plural. No, it's a verb. Oh. So what's the verb declension? We just learned this. Yeah, it's um. Wait, but it's not, it's it's we a. It's not like he be a. That's correct. Um, that's because this particular verb oh, it's has an irregular term. form. Yeah. So it's listed in the book. Do you see it? Absolutely. It's a gerund. Yeah, gerund or absolutive oh. of what? This one. Having seen? Correct, having seen. Okay, and vanditva, what's the case? Uh, that's abs absolute. Yes. Correct, and what's it mean? What's the verb? Okay, everyone's going to do their homework. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done this. <laughs> I'm not going to make this easy for you because then you won't learn anything. Um, oh, it's worship, right? Worship. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Worship. And so, pan hang. Having worshipped. Um, having worshipped. Pan hang. This might be one of the new words that you didn't study. Accusative? Um, yes, it's accusative. Singular? Singular accusative, yeah. Okay, I'll give you a freebie. Uh, it means question. Panha is question. So then what's puchati? Puchati? So panhang means question. What is puchati? Asks. Asks. Great. She doesn't even have the book. It could be. It doesn't make sense in this case. It could be, but in, in this case it would be yeah. asks. So let's put this all together. What do we have? Someone have, want to take a stab at this? Having worshipped, having. Okay, having worshipped, that's one word, correct? What about the other? Having seen what? That's a No, this is genitive. Having seen... Students. Having seen the student, yes. singular accusative, the student. Of the Tathagata. Of the Tathagata. Heard it. Asks a question. Okay, so coming all together. Having, having seen and having worshipped the oh. disciple of the Tathagata. The hermit asks, the hermit a, asks question. a question. Okay? So this one is slightly tricky because both of these verbs have the same object. They're both going to this object. Um, Follow me on this? Mm -hmm. okay. Are there no conjunctions in Paul? There are conjunctions, but they are sometimes present and sometimes not present. Okay. Yeah, we'll get to conjunctions later. Huh. So the, the students are accusative and the question is accusative. Yes. Because they're correct. both subjects to actions. Yes, correct. So the absolutive verb still takes objects the same as any other verb, or can take objects the same as any other verb. We could also take this, Vandipa, as not having an object, but then it doesn't really make any sense. Having worshipped, having worshipped what? Having worshipped the Tathagata's disciple. If it's like, a, can, can it be like having worshipped them, or having worshipped one? Uh, well, then we would expect another accusative noun. Okay. 
which could happen. There could be a pronoun, for example, but we don't see one in this case. Wait, so does the uh, general and the opposite, the verbs don't have singular and plural? No, does the gerund have singular and plural? No. Hmm. Gerund, the gerund or absolutive does not have a number. Uh, it doesn't have singular or plural. It's always the same. Okay? Mm -hmm. Anything else on this one? Next one. Upasako vaharan gantva samananam danam dadati. Let's take it one at a time. Upasako. Singular nominative mm -hmm. lady, okay? Good. Vaharan. Uh, the monastery. Good. Uh, nom uh, accusative. Good. Accusative. Singular. singular. Correct. Yes! <laughs> about gun -wa. What do we have here? Uh, absolutive. Correct. And what's the verb? Gone. Yes. <laughs> yes. Having gone. Correct. Oh, no. <laughs> Congratulations. And another time I'll explain how that particular form comes to be. But for now it's good enough just to know that's what it is. Having gone. Yeah. Samanana. What's going on here? Samana. Samana, good. What's a samana? Contemplative. Correct. And what is this ana ending? Uh, stative? Well, it could be. What else could it be? Well, oh, actually, it is dative. It could be dative. It could be dative. What else could it be? Well, it's like to the, right? Like to the Buddha of refuge, right? It could be dative. Oh, it could be what uh, could ownership. It be? Yeah. Genitive. Genitive, yes. And what's the number? Plural. Plural, correct. So it's plural, genitive, or dative. So of the samanas or for the samanas? What's dana? Dana. Correct. What does dana mean? Don't know. You don't know what dana means? <laughs> Gift? Me. Good. Gift or giving? Gifts. And what's the declension? Accusative. Accusative. Singular. Singular. What else could it be? I'm not saying else. We just learned a new form of noun. Oh, could be neuter. Yeah. Could be neuter what? Nominative or accusative. Correct. And what is dadati? What's going on here? Singular. Singular, verb. verb, correct. And what does it mean? Together. I'll give you a little hint here. Together. Together. Yep. So this, we'll go into it later, um, but this is called uh, root duplication. So the dati is a duplication of the root. The root da means give. Uh, so much later on we'll talk about root duplication. For now it's just enough to know that it exists. The dadati, gives. So let's put the sentence together. What is this saying? Good. Gives. Uh, a gift. gift. <laughs> having. Oh. So, properly speaking, <laughs> this phrase comes first because it indicates mm -hmm. the preceding action. Mm -hmm. So, you always take the absolutive phrases first, before going to the rest of the sentence. So let's start there. Having gone to the monastery. Good. Having gone to the monastery. Lady Lati. Lady Lati. Gives a gift to the Kitabutu. So. Correct. Very good. <laughs> Excellent. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really impressed. You're clearly learning. It's encouraging. Um, in a few months you'll be reading Siddhas. Yay! <laughs> See, it's really not a challenging language. Mm -hmm. Does anybody agree with me? Yes. Good. Mm -hmm. Great. I just, I wish that they ha all had different forms, though. Because when mm -hmm. they're doubled up, it's confusing. Yeah. But, you know. Yeah. Yeah, you get okay. used to it. <laughs> you get used to it. Yeah. Uh, the flip side is there's some languages where there's absolutely no declension at all. Like, some languages don't even distinguish singular and plural. Mm -hmm. 
So you'll just have a string of words like uh, cow, grass, eat. And you have no idea whether there's multiple cows. You have no idea whether the eating is happening now or in the past or the future. Oh, that's like Chinese. Exactly. Um, so at least in Poly, oh, nice. there's a bit oh, more information. We're so vague. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you know it's, how, how do you translate that? You how just, because it's, it's, it is, it's, it's beauty, it's in its vagueness. Call it's eats grass. It's vagueness. Call eats grass. Oh, yeah. that's the... <laughs> anyway, so be, be grateful that Pali is not that big. It's maybe slightly bigger than one would hope for, but it's not that big. For the most part, Pali sentences have fairly limited range of interpretation. For the most part, you can tell what a sentence means without too much guesswork or puzzling. Um, especially when it's in its context, you can figure it out fairly easily. So now for a much simpler one. Gona, gona, tenang, kadante. Gona. Plural. Plural, correct. Nominative. Nominative, yes. And what is the noun? <laughs> And you can also print out a glossary for that book, by the way. Yeah, it's not in, in alphabetical order. It's, um, well, it is in alphabetical ox, order, but it's in the Pali ox. alphabetical order, which yeah. is not the same as English alphabetical order. That makes sense. So another, yeah. uh, and on another occasion, I'll explain Pali alphabetical order. Because what's basically Pali alphabetical order <coughs> goes from the back of your mouth to the front of your mouth. Mm -hmm. So first it has the vowels, and then the consonants are arranged by location in the mouth. So it starts with k and g, because that's all the way back in your throat. So that's monstrous. And then when it and then it, it works its way through until the front of your mouth, when it gets to m and b and p, which are all on your lips. So it starts from your throat and works forward to your lips. So. This is how you remember the Pali alphabet. It's completely rational. The English alphabet is totally random. Yeah. The Pali alphabet is at least rational. What's that? But we memorized that one already. Well, now you're going to learn a new one. But the thing is, you don't need to memorize it because you know the principle that it's based on. Hmm. That's weird. It's the only. I mean, yeah, even Greek, like, goes. It's exactly the same as. What? Alpha, beta, gamma, delta, A, B, C, D, E, yeah, it's the same. Oh. Well, that's probably where the Roman alphabet comes from. But yeah, the, yeah, so the Pali alphabet is, and I'll say the sounds, not the name of the letters. A, A, I, I, U, U, A, O, so the vowels, and then the consonants, K, K, G, G, N, Ch, T, J, J, N, Ta ta da da na, ta ta da da n, pa pa ba ba m. Okay. Well, then could you? Um, and then after that is all the random stuff. <laughs> after that is all the random stuff which doesn't fit anywhere, uh, which is Y R L V S H uh, and uh, the nasal consonant. But I'll, again, I'll go over that tomorrow. Uh, at the beginning of the next class, I'll make a note now. At uh, the beginning of the next class, I'll go over the Pali alphabetical yeah. order. Dante, could you write a song? No. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Uh, there is one little trick that you can use uh, to remember the Pali alphabet, and I'll show it to you tomorrow. Tomorrow? Uh, next week. Next week. If you actually wanted to learn Pali, we would have to have these classes every day. Um, once a week, it's going to take us a bit of work, especially if you know we do your homework. <laughs> guilt trip. This is a guilt trip. Do your homework. No. So. Oh, we could get a retreat, like a two weeks retreat or something. Dear God. If there was enough interest, I would do it. <laughs> so, gona. What does this word mean? Oxen. Oxen, yes, correct. What Can does I... oxen mean? Uh, ox is like, it's like a big cow, kind of. 
They pull cards. Yeah. So, um, oxen, so plural nominative of ox, kenang. The dative or genitive? It is most likely neither of those. Accusative? Yes. Singular? Yes. Oh. And the word is. Pen? What's that? Where does it? Uh, you might just pronounce the oh well T um, towards the middle or so. <laughs> this K, okay K. I'm like where is it? It's after K. Oh there okay um <laughs> that means grass. Ooh. Grass correct I'll and kadanti. What's that? Eat. Correct eats. What's this again? Oxen eat. Grass. Excellent. A nice simple sentence. Why is grass singular? That's a good question. Just one. <laughs> uh, well, because we do the same thing in English. We say grass uh, and grasses. But you don't say, I'm going out to pick the grasses. You just say, I'm going out to pick the grass. I'm going out to mow the grass. So we do the same thing in English. Um, so it's, uh, I believe the proper term is like a collective singular. Like you say, uh, the peoples of so-and-so. Even though people is technically a plural, it's, oh, that's a bad example. Help me out here. Like collective cut your singular. hair. Yeah, exactly. Cut your hair. But technically you're cutting your hairs, but we don't say that. Okay, so collective singular. All right. Luriko hatena sare adaya avranyang pavisati. Luriko. Nominative singular. Correct. Nominative singular. We've encountered this word before. It's a form of wrong livelihood. Butcher. Close. What's another person that involves inflicting harm on animals? Hitman. Close. Hunter. A, a hitman specifically for animals. A hunter. hunter correct. Hunter. hunter. So Lidico. Hunter. Nominative singular. Hatena. Catches. Hatena. Says hello. <laughs> Hand? Yeah, correct. Yeah. And what's the declension? Oh, uh, that's um, with that. Is instrumental. instrumental, correct. Yeah. So with the hand. Saray. Neuter. Accusative, plural. Neuter, accusative, plural. Very good. I'm impressed. And we what's are... the word? Oh, arrow. Arrows. Yes. Arrows. Arrows. Plural. Right. Adaya. Mm -hmm. uh, having. Correct. Absolutive. Having what? Taken. Taken. Yes. Notice the same root as Dana, only in the other direction. So having taken. Arrows with the hand. Mm -hmm. Is this all fitting together? Mm -hmm. Aranyang. Aranyang. Accusative. Mm -hmm. yeah. Accusative, singular, correct. A deer? No. Nice try, but no. Forest. Yes. Uh, forest or wilderness. It literally means uh, not ruled. Like not controlled. Um, so run, Ranya means kingdom. Uh, Aranya means non kingdom. So Aranya literally means anywhere that's not directly controlled by the government. Um, so it's, it's commonly used to mean forest, but the literal meaning is non kingdom. Um, so, like deep inside the ocean? That would be Aranya. Um, if you go out uh, far enough away from cities that there's no cops around, then that you might call that Aranya. But properly speaking, these days, there's very little Aranya because pretty much everywhere is claimed by one government or another. Even Only oceans. 
Um, as far as I know, only oceans are, would be properly Aranya these days. Possibly Antarctica. Antarctica would be Aranya. So that means wilderness, right? Wilderness, yeah. I translate it wilderness. So I'm wondering why, why is uh, so Kamatanya, that means forest tradition, right? But Kamatana? Means, yeah. Kamatana means... does not mean forest. Kamatana means a uh, meditation object. Oh. Yeah. All right, place of work. So it doesn't, it doesn't actually involve the word. Like wilderness or forest. No. Oh, but then why why are why are they called the forest tradition? Because they tend to live in forests. <laughs> okay. okay. So practically speaking, Aranya means anywhere outside of a town. Um, so that's its practical meaning. It's uh, the translation of forest probably came because at the time of the Buddha, northern India was ninety percent forest. These days you go to northern India and it's 99% forest. empty, yeah, non-forest. <laughs> but that's just because over the past couple of thousand years they've cut down all the trees. Um, but it used to be just one massive forest um, from one end of the country to the other. Nowadays it's almost all gone. Um, just what happens when you have people living there for a long time. Aranya, so non-kingdom. Uh, or wilderness, publicity. Singular. Singular verb. Enters. Enters. So let's put this all together. Start with the absolutive phrase. So starting with the absolutive. Having taken. Having taken. Arrows. Arrows. With his hand. With his hand. Hunter. The hunter. hunter. And then there's the forest. forest. Correct. Excellent. All right. Uh, we're almost done here. So you can let your suicidal thoughts dissipate. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not. A, oh, great. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> uh, people looked a little bit depressed for a minute there. So, putto nahatva bhattam bhutva manchang agruiha sayati. Putto? Correct, um, nominative singular son, correct. Nahatva. Having. having. Good, absolute, having. Taking a bath. Correct, having ah, bathed. Yeah, how much is oh, about the gas thing? Having. Accusative plural? Oh, accusative singular? Accusative singular, correct. It's something that Italians really like. Pasta? <laughs> okay, but more general, more general than, than pasta. Food. Food, correct. <laughs> Good times. Does that mean rice? Butter means rice. Um, Odana more specifically means rice. Kabata is more general food. So, okay. butva. What's this? Having. Having. Correct. Manchang. Accusative singular. Correct. This might be a new word. What? Climbed, right? Climbed. Good. And what's the tense of that? Having climbed. Having climbed. So having climbed. A mountain? No. Oh. A cliff? So when, after you eat dinner, you get up on your... Stairs! No. Okay, well, what's this for? Sayati. Asleep. Sleeps. Ooh, so sleep. when you want to sleep, what do you get up on? Tatami. Bed. Bed. That's correct. So let's put this whole sentence together. Um, starting with the absolutes. Having This one. Bathed. Having bathed, correct. Having eaten, having eaten food, mm -hmm. correct? Having ascended to the oh, bed. Sense. Having gotten up on the bed. <laughs> sun. sun. Correct. The sun? Yeah, the sun. S U, uh, so S O N. Oh, the sun. As in the male child. Okay. Are we getting a hang of this? So you do all the absolutive phrases first, then you go to the subject and the verb, okay? 
All right. Vanaja Bandani Nagaram Ha Gamang Aharanti. Merchants. Merchants, correct. This is a new word. Neuter. Neuter, correct. Neuter what? Three. Correct. And what number? Single. Ah, uh, plural. Correct. So plural, nominative, accusative, or vocative. Correct. What does it mean? What do merchants always have? Money. Money. Close. Wares. What do merchants? Wares. Correct. Wares mm -hmm. or goods. Uh, Nagaram ha. First off, what's the declension? That's uh, ablative. Correct. So what is ablative? From. From. From Nagara. What's Nagara? The hell from? No. <laughs> it's not village. Oh, the next one. What's bigger than a village? Town. A city. Town. town. Correct. Um, so from the town. To the city. To the village. To the village. Comes. No. Gold. No. Leaves. No. <laughs> what is Brings. the merchant Brings. going? Brings. Brings. Correct. So putting it all together. Somebody want to say what this sentence means without my guidance. Having... Um, there is no absolute okay. in the sentence. <laughs> Merchants <laughs> brings goods. From town to the village. Correct. Excellent. Yay! Um, you get a red star. <laughs> yes, on my forehead. Right. But why is Ara Aharanti? Is that the same as Ah? Uh, oh no, no, no sorry. Uh, uh, it doesn't matter. Scrap it. Okay. Like I didn't say anything. <laughs> um, I'm glad. It's good. Feel free to ask questions, even if they're dumb questions. <laughs> That's how you learn. Mm -hmm. Remember, there are, there are no dumb questions. Only dumb people who don't ask questions. Because <laughs> when you don't ask questions, you'll just be dumb forever and never learn. Mm -hmm. So always ask questions, even if they're dumb. Cool. I'll do that. Great. Yachikasa uh, Udikena Panani Dhovati. Bigger. For Yachika? Or genitive? Or genitive. Yeah, so what's the a Yachika? Son of Yachika. Son of Yachika? What's a Yachika? A Yachika. Everybody knows you what that is. It's a beggar. Beggar. So, son of beggar. Udikena. We already had this word earlier. Water. What's going on with the water? What's happening? What's the declension? Instrumental. Instrumental. So that means... With water. With water. Excellent. What's Panani? First off, what's the declension? Neuter. Neuter. Neuter what? Nominative accusative. Or? Vocative. Yes. Plural. Yes, correct. So what's Panna? No, that's Panya. Pandas. You find a lot of these in the forest. Leaf. Leaf, correct. So, leaves, plural. Dhovati. Is that run? What's that? Is that run, is it? No. So, we know that it involves water. Rinse. What's that? Rinse. Yeah, rinse or wash. Wash. Yeah. Okay, so putting this all together, what do we have? Like the sun washes the leaves with water? Correct. Okay, well, that's all I have for you tonight. Um, any questions so far? So, is it true that if you know um, most of the sentence, most of the words in a sentence, you can pretty much guess the rest? That's often true. Yeah. Um, especially in Pali, when Pali uses a very consistent set of roots. Um, you'll start to recognize the roots of the other words 
and have some sense of what they probably mean. Uh, Does that just come to you through like time or? Yeah, exposure. Okay. People have made lists of the roots uh, used in Pali, but if you don't already know a lot of Pali, those lists are useless. They'll just confuse you further. Uh, yeah, when the time comes, you can look at those lists and you may or may not find them useful. Okay, anything else? All right, well, I think that's enough for this evening.